So this is going to be an intro to three video on how to read a engineer's rule. Just a quick one, but it's a simple process that some people do struggle with a little bit, especially coming from um, a non-engineering background or from school. You'll see that on this rule, there's two scales of measurements. So along the top here, we have the metric system, and along the bottom, we have the imperial system. So if you're American, you'll probably be more familiar with the imperial side of the rule. And if you are anywhere else in the world, you'll probably be more familiar with the metric side of the rule. Now, the measurements themselves on the metric side, which is what I'm going to talk about first, you may identify these as centimeters. Now, whilst that is perfectly fine if you work in school or, you know, your day to day life does not involve any sort of engineering, what we do refer to them as in engineering is millimeters. We prefer millimeters and meters, and we try to ignore centimeters wherever possible. So this would be 10 millimeters, this would be 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on and so forth. And then we use the increments between to identify different stages. So this is 10 millimeters, and this is 20, but we know that the longer mark in the middle is 15 millimeters. And then what we can see is between the five and the 10, we also have smaller increments again, and that identifies the individual millimeters. So we can see six, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for the keen eye amongst you, you'll notice that there's even a shorter mark again inside them marks, and that is for each half millimeter. Now it can be tricky trying to identify the half millimeters, and it's rare that you'll need to measure half a millimeter on a rule, but nonetheless, it's nice to have them there. As you move up the scale on the ruler as well, you'll see that the half millimeters drop off. So from the 10 onwards, there isn't a half millimeter mark on there. It's just for the first 100 millimeters that we have those half marks. Again, if you were expected to mark something, uh, say like 60 millimeters on a plate, you may find that when your ruler is down, it can become quite difficult to see exactly where the marks are. And say if our 60 millimeters are there, then we would expect the measurement from the end of our rule to the six to be 60 millimeters. Now, the imperial gauge in our rule, as we can see there, counts up in inches. So we have one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. You'll notice that the way that the divisions on the imperial side of the rule add up are very different to how the metric side lines up. So if we look at our first inch here, we can see we have a half mark, so that's half an inch. And then we have our quarter inches identified by the next longest line. So essentially, that's how it works, is the height of the line indicates the um, priority of the segment. So the tallest line is a one, the second tallest line is the half inch, the third tallest line is the quarter inch, Okay, and then we go down to eighth of an inch down there, and then sixteen of an inch in there, and then thirty second of an inch is that smaller division down there. The smallest division is thirty second of an inch. Uh, so if you wanted two and a half inches, for example, you would come up to the two, and then the half mark will be two and a half inches, or two and a quarter inches would be there, or two and three eighths would be there. Again, as the scale increases up the rule, we lose the uh, smaller scale. So after the four inch mark, we lose the 30 seconds. And we just have the quarters, the eighths, and the sixteenths. That's pretty much all there is to reading an engineering rule. But it's important to remember, you have both scales on. And if you're lucky enough, some rules will have a conversion table on the back. So we can see this one has the tapping drills sizes. So if I wanted to tap a what, an M8 hole, I know I need a 6.8 millimeter drill. And as you work up, you'll see that conversion factors are sometimes included as well. So we can see like one eighth of an inch is equal to 3.175 millimeters. Again, these could be very useful tools. Uh, if you're stuck in a jiffy and you need to, do some conversions. So we see five inches is the equivalent of 127 millimeters. So that's a typical engineering rule and that's how you read them.